it's great to see you. So in this episode we're going to be chainsaw milling. I'm going to give you five of my favourite tips. In a previous episode, click up here to see it, I gave you 17 tips. This one, five of my favourites. Tip number one, spend a really good time setting up the first straight edge. It's hard to go back if you get a wonky first cut and it's much better to spend the time now getting everything completely sorted and solid. So at the end here, this piece is screwed onto the ladder which is in turn just screwed through into the end of the log and that works pretty well for getting it locked there and then it's just a question of locking it along the length. To save butchering the ladder too much, I just use these metal bars and a little bit of plywood and I screw through that clamping the ladder to the log. Now it's possible to over tighten these and pull the ladder out of true, so at the end I always go back and check looking down the ladder to make sure it hasn't twisted. Rule of thumb, make it more solid than you think you need and then hopefully it'll go swimming. The second thing that's going to improve milling greatly is having this on a slight slope. So you hopefully have already seen, I've just got it a slight gradient and the chainsaw mill is going to smoothly slide down there. It started tailing! <laughs> Tip number three, always have a tarpaulin ready to throw over everything. Okay, after that little excitement, let's start milling this log. The setup's all nice, we're in position, looks okay. Start her up, and away we go, easing into the cut slowly as always, and maintaining that nice angle that'll just draw the saw through the cut. No need really to push hardly at all, the chain should just be pulling it into the cut if it's nice and sharp. Especially if there's a slight gradient, if anything, you're likely to be sort of holding the saw back more than pushing it. With that first cut done, it's a question of unfastening the screws, taking the ladder away, and taking off that first slab. If you've been watching along, you'll know in the first tips video, I made the argument that it's good to use the straight edge again, even after you've created that reference edge and clearly I didn't do that here. That's because sometimes I just don't follow my own good advice. In this case I wanted a nice thick cut so that I could make a beam or beams from this piece and it just happened conveniently that if I took the ladder off and went straight for it the mill was all set up to the right depth of cut. Take a rag with you in case it rains. Tip 4 is that, but also while you're between cuts, refueling. I mentioned before that it's important to check the fuel level between each cut, but also with these caps I've noticed lots of people tend to fill it right to the top of both the fuel and the oil. And not only does that mean that you're much more likely to have an overflow and have fluids go everywhere, but also it makes for some unhappy seals because as you're compressing them shut there's nowhere there's no spare room to compress and I found that tends to really reduce the life of the seals and it's much more likely you'll end up with oil and petrol leaks around that area. Now one of the cool things about chainsaw mills is that these half round bits you can you get boards out of them normally if you want to. It does often take a little bit of rejigging around so that the saw is going to clear anything that the half round is resting on, but it does mean that you can then stack it with the rest of them and you don't have an awkward, big awkward half round bit left over which is a bit wasteful. Uh, in terms of doing things with these half rounds, I'm still struggling to come up with ideas. I've made benches from them in the past and a few other things, but I'd love to hear your ideas for using half round the end and the start bits. So that's my question for you. Hit me up in the comments below. Tip number five, the last tip. So there can be a whole big debate about whether or not you should remove the bark from your slabs. 
If you don't, then you certainly will want to do something like pressure washing or brushing vigorously. I've even hoovered them in the past when they've been inside. This is all an attempt to remove sort of organic matter that bugs can feed on and like and possibly bugs themselves if you're blasting them with a pressure washer. But also just all the sawdust and things, all that wants to go off. Any residue of bar oil, in my case bog and mud, all that kind of thing. Well friends, I hope you found some of that useful. But if you haven't already, definitely check out the chainsaw milling tips, the previous video. There's a ton of good information in that. If you're into upcycling, inventing, making, all that good stuff, then consider subscribing and peruse some of my other videos.